It's just, it's incredibly simple. It's almost disappointing. This is probably the question that I get the most on all of my platforms. Anytime I put my work out there, this question always comes up. So I've had enough and I'm gonna tell you guys about my brushes today. Now this video is gonna be unscripted, it's gonna be chill. I'm just gonna to talk to you guys about the tools that I use, but you're gonna be very disappointed because there is literally no secret to anything that I do. I really do think when it comes to brushes, less is more. Now, I'm gonna show you guys my Photoshop brushes, but I do have a set for Procreate that is available on my Patreon right now. All right, so what's the first thing that you're gonna do when you start a painting? You're gonna start with a sketch, and there are certain brushes that I like to use for that. I've got these two babies right here. Now, the one thing that I look for in my line brushes uh, for my sketches is control. So how easily am I gonna be able to communicate an idea in a clear way without the brush fighting me, okay? And I think this is pretty good. You know, I'm able to communicate this idea really easily, really effectively. The brush is not fighting me. You know, it works really well. Whereas if I were using a brush like the airbrush for this, which I don't know why you would do that, but you... you Okay, so there's no secret to these brushes that I use for sketching. They're just really small, really thin. They give you a lot of control. You can say things really clearly with them. That That's it. Okay, so then we move on to other brushes. So there's like the airbrush and the round brush. These brushes cover a larger surface. The round brush here is actually my primary brush for almost everything that I do, you know, in terms of rendering, coloring, and all that, because it's just so simple. It gets the job done, and that's what I like about it. So you put down the skin color, you know, you've got this nice kind of fade on this brush and you can also create some really solid hard edges. You can, you can just, there's endless possibilities. I've experimented with a whole lot of different brushes throughout my time, you know, practicing my portraits and things like that. And honestly, nothing really comes close to the ease of use that I have with the round brush. I just keep coming back to it every single time. I've tried different tip shapes. I've tried different textures and nothing really works quite as well as just that simple, clean, round brush it's just it's amazing it's good for everything let's say you want to draw some hair okay well i mean like look look at this look at this look like what is that look it's a, there's hair the round brush 10 seconds. It's honestly one of my favorite brushes, you know, and one of the important things to note about the round brush is uh, you want to make sure that you're using pressure opacity because this allows you to, you know, the harder you press, the more solid it gets and the lighter you press, the lighter the brush stroke gets. But if you turn that off, you know, every single line you put down is going to be very solid. So make sure that you have that on and it's going to do wonders for you. For my painting process, the majority of the time is spent on rendering and uh, getting the colors right. And for that entire section, I'm using the round brush. If you look at my process videos on Patreon, you're going to see that for the majority of the time, I've got the round brush selected. So for those of you guys who are expecting some kind of secret brush, some kind of secret ingredient that allows me to do everything that I do. I'm, right, and then you come down here, you know, I've got some textured brushes. This is for when I want to get a little bit frisky with my drawings. You know, there's some cool looking textures in there, but I save that till the end. And there's also like the little half tone texture that I like to apply to a lot of my drawings. And there's also a blending brush. So the blending brush I think is pretty important. If you're trying to render skin, you want a blending brush that is really nice and smooth. If I blend the edge between the hair and the skin, now you've got a nice soft flowy transition, almost like you brush it over with an airbrush. You can just play around with the settings, tweak it a little bit. Um, I'm using the smudge tool in Photoshop and you could use the smudge tool in Procreate for this as well. But yeah, I've been using this one since forever and it works great for skin. It's just something that I combine with the round brush, which leaves some hard edges. Ooh, that's my goodness. You know, the round brush. Oh no, time to post on Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, guys. Look, when I say unscripted, I meant unscripted. Honestly, most of my videos are unscripted anyways. I don't even know what that means. Okay, back to this. And I've also got an eraser tool. So my eraser has a little bit of texture. You know, if you erase back into it, you can see there's a little bit of a brush looking kind of texture on my, my eraser. I, I don't know, I just think that it's a little bit more interesting than just a flat round eraser. Nothing too special about the eraser. It just takes things off the page. Now, here's something that I wanna talk about, okay? So if you look at all my brushes, now if I scroll down, 
these are still my brushes, okay? We're still in my brush pack. That's a lot of brushes. But here's the thing, okay? Here's the secret. When I'm painting, I think there's an optimal number of six to seven different brushes that I use for the entire painting, not including the smudge tool and the eraser. And I like to keep it simple like this because each brush leaves a very distinct mark on that page. So if you put down 20 different textures on a single area, you're gonna get a very crowded, very cluttered look unless you're going for something that is completely uh, messy and painterly. It depends on what you're looking for. But in my paintings, I value clarity a lot. I value being able to see what the subject is and being able to pick up what they're doing on first glance. So I don't need that many different painterly textures. And that's the reason why why I like to keep my brushes really simple. That's probably also a big reason why the basic round brush plays such a big part in my workflow. And I think this is a really good tip because especially if you're a beginner, you're just getting into the flow of digital painting, you wanna make sure not to get overwhelmed by your brushes. It's good for you to try out different brushes, different textures, but you also wanna make sure that you're the one in the driver's seat and the brush is not taking over control of what you're trying to say. Find five, six different brushes that you're really comfortable with and focus on finding a purpose and a spot for them in each painting that you make. And you can experiment with a different set of brushes for different paintings. If you're going for something a bit more painterly, obviously you're gonna need brushes that are a little bit more textured that have a little bit more flair to them. If you're going for something a little bit more clear, kind of like what I'm doing, Doing. Obviously, you're gonna want brushes that are flatter, brushes that are simple, they're easy to use, and very predictable. So that's a tip for all you beginners, okay? Don't get overwhelmed by your brushes. Take like four or five, find the ones that really work for you. And there is no secret brush that I use or any other artist uses that you know, elevates their skill to a new level. So for the majority of my paintings, um, I would be using the round brush for applying colors and rendering and using a line brush, something that's a little bit sharper for applying some details like that, facial features and things like that. Just getting the sharp details in there, getting that taper. And like I said before, I use about six, seven different brushes for a lot of my paintings. The majority of these brushes, I don't even touch uh, during my painting process. And I know a lot of other big artists who have 50, 60 different brushes in their brush sets, you know, they also do not touch the majority of those brushes in the process of a single painting. I mean, coming down here, you can see I've got all of these different textured brushes, right? And they're really interesting to play around with. I actually don't use them for most of my workflows. They're here mostly because if I happen to be drawing something that would require a specific texture, I will have them on hand and I wouldn't have to go online to look for some new brushes or make one up on the spot. Okay, so before I get carried away with that, another brush that I really like to use in my workflow for things like uh, local colors on the skin is the airbrush. Let's say I wanna apply a blush, just like that, you know, two seconds, and you've got a nice soft fade into the colors, into the rest of the face. It's also one of those brushes that you wanna make sure you don't overdo because uh, if you use it too much, your painting is gonna to start to look out of focus, things are gonna start looking muddy. But really the key takeaway I think uh, from looking at my brushes and the way that I use them is that sometimes less is more. I really think the round brush is the default brush for so many applications for a good reason. It's just very effective. It really takes the fluff, you know, and all the different distractions with textures out of the equation. So if you're a beginner, you can focus solely on the colors that you're putting down. And I think to be honest with you guys, for maybe about 70% of my painting process, I am using the basic round brush. For the other 30%, I'm using, you know, maybe a line brush with a little bit of opacity uh, for, you know, some of the sharper details things like that. It's just, it's incredibly simple. It's almost disappointing. There's absolutely nothing to it. You know, there's nothing special about my brushes. It's not about the brushes, it's about the way you use them. If you guys wanna know my secrets, you wanna draw like me, a uh, basic round brush and a nice thin line brush, you're good to go. I hope you guys are satisfied with getting a look at my different brushes. I know you're probably disappointed to know that I'm using a basic round brush and that there is no secret formula to anything that I'm doing, but I think that's part of the beauty of it. You know, I feel like there should be a little bit more to it, but honestly, this is it. Like this is, it's painfully simple. Anyways, I keep getting that same question, so I figured today I'd answer it. But if you guys want an even more detailed 45 minute breakdown of my complete workflow with all of my brushes, that is over on my Patreon for the month of July. Basic round brush with pressure opacity is king. Like, I don't know what else to say to you guys. But I hope this was helpful for people who have been asking about my brushes, for people who are curious about my workflow with my brushes. So with that being said, if you guys wanna see more digital art content like this, feel free to subscribe 
to my channel. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Honestly, guys, I know a lot of people join my Patreon for, you know, the brushes that I put out, but there's nothing special about them. You know, it's not going to change your life. The tutorials will change your life because that's knowledge. The brushes, I'm going to lose all my patrons. <laughs> this is going to be such a short and chaotic video. I already know it. Come on, guys. I've actually had people asking me, what pencil do you use in my sketching video? It's it's a mechanical pencil from Muji. That's the, what difference is it going to make? I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I don't understand.